All right, welcome back to Salt City Counseling, everybody. Once again, my name is Scott Carter. I'm a licensed therapist here in the, the beautiful state of Utah. And uh, I'm going to apologize a little bit up front, preemptively. The software that I use to do, because I'm going to do a little bit of a screen recording on this. The software that I use for screen recording is really glitchy. But it's super user-friendly. It has easy, simple features on it. And I'm trying to find like a good working screen recording software for cheap or for free. <sighs> It's a challenge. I, I don't have time to learn complex softwares. I don't. So if anybody has any recommendations for a good screen recording software, as a side note, maybe please leave a comment below. <laughs> that would help me out a lot. I just need to be user friendly and not so glitchy. So I apologize up front that this, this software is glitchy, but but it, it has the best functionality in terms of controls for, for sharing my screen. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about my 12 rules for high conflict custody and divorce. Now these rules started out as five. I did a video probably at least two to three years ago on my five rules for high conflict custody and divorce. I've upgraded them to 12. And over the years, I've just kind of uh, improved on my methods, improved on the, you know, uh, just worked on it, got more perspectives, got more feedback, kind of seen what people are dealing with, what people are struggling with. And so I upgraded my course because I, I had a course on Udemy on my five rules for high conflict custody and divorce, and they, they it badly needed an update. And so I, up, I updated it to 12 uh, rules, and that course, the 12 rules, is on my new website, highconflictcommunity.com. Uh, that link is in the description below. Sorry, my phone is buzzing. I just want to make sure it's not something for work. Um, we're good. And so I'm going, I'm actually going to share uh, one of my rules in this. And the reason why, I, uh, one of the re main reasons why I felt like this need, these, this set of rules needed a drastic and dramatic and important update was uh, I realized that there was a lot of logistical stuff like do this and do that sort of by the book type of stuff. Uh, whereas not very many of the rules sort of focus on sort of the psychological game of it. Uh, these rules, these 12 rules are mostly for people like if, with, that are court involved. And so the original five were mostly geared towards people who are court involved. Same with these 12 rules. But here's the thing is these 12 rules focus more of that psychological and mental game. Because quite frankly, that's, that's what it is. So I'm going to share here. Um, let's go to my screen. So I'm going to share rule number 11 in this. Okay. As well as, as well as kind of the homework assignment. Um, so rule number 11 is to shift the focus. This, is, this has to do with court, right? And what I've noticed about family court, uh, if you're new here, by the way, um, I'm, I'm very down on family court. I'm really down on family lawyers. Um, and actually, you know what? Before we get to this, I'm going to get my housekeeping out of the way. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, help me get to my first 1 million, man. I'm super close. So hit subscribe if you have a viewer question having to do with high conflict, divorce, custody, personality disorders, mental health in general, blah, blah, blah. Scott C. at Salt City Counseling is my uh, email address. You can leave a comment below. You can leave a question. My arm itches. Um, you can leave a, a question in the comment section below. If you really like my content, please hit the tip jar. Venmo, Cash App, PayPal. And, uh, yeah, uh, if uh, the more people that hit the tip jar, the more it will enable me to keep content going like this to you. Okay. So let's get into rule number 11 here, which again is, is shifting the focus. Here's what I've noticed about family court, man, is that like family court, uh, they seem to, uh, really, uh, oh, here's my disclaimer. I'm going to talk very poorly about, I'm going to talk down on, on family attorneys and family court. <laughs> so if you were saying that, <laughs> just so you know, okay, the thing what I've noticed about family court is that once they, they shift, a, once a focus gets put on one parent, the, the bias and the, the, the crazy inability to hold parents to the same standards is, is insane. And so rule number 11 is to work to shift the focus okay and it's going to take time i've noticed that with family court um one parent you know like there's a report that the kids are um 
uh, tying each other up and leaving each other in the closet for hours and hours on end. Or one parent is gone. Like borderline parents, for example, they're notorious for, for leaving the children unattended for hours and hours and hours on end. And, and the home essentially becomes the sequel of to Lord of the Flies. And uh, But if, if the court is too busy looking at the other parent and scrutinizing them, it's like, oh, well, we heard the kids were up too late on a school night. And you're like, hello? <laughs> <laughs> and right what about what about lord of the flies part two <laughs> happening over there and, and and quite honestly family this is this is just one of my gripes with family court is their inability to equilaterally treat the same treat the both parents with the same with the same standards and if the focus is on you if you have more or less been uh demonized or painted as the bad guy or you are the designated villain in this situation uh, the fam family court, uh, judges, attorneys, commissioners, whomever, they're, they're frankly not going to see through this. They're, they're not, I'm sorry, but they're, they're not that competent. Um, and it may be that they're just overloaded. There's the, the system's too backed up. They're burned out. Whatever the case may be, uh, your kid, you lose, your kids lose more than anybody and they don't particularly seem to care. Um, they have heavy, heavy responsibilities and they wield it inappropriately. Uh, they just do. That's just the, that's just the ugly truth of the situation. So here's the thing. Rule number 11 is, is work to shift the focus. And you may want to strategize with your attorney where you're like, I'm just in this, I'm just in the hot seat, right? So, so here's sort of my, my tips, right? Is work to put them under the microscope. Okay. Um, and, and shift the focus from, from you over to them. And the ways that you do this is right. You want to point out some of the hypocrisy. Why is it okay when they do it? Why is why or why is that behavior okay? Or why is this behavior okay? Or why? Okay. So and I talked about this in a previous video. Most apologetic parents they spend way 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 too much time um, explaining or defending themselves, defending their behaviors, explaining their behaviors. Uh, instead, what you ought to do is work to shift the focus. Right. Try to think of this as a the accountability is a little bit of a tennis match. When it comes to you, ask a question whoo, to whack that ball right back. Um, I also have a course on, by the way, on high conflict communication, where I kind of go into detail about the Socratic questioning method, which is an effective way to help shift the focus and shift the accountability. And you move away from defending yourself to like, hey, look, it, and, and I see these parents too, where it's like, they're willing to, to take accountability if they're making it. If they're uh, making mistakes, they're willing to work at correcting them. But often in a high conflict situation, the other parent is not. And we just want equilateral accountability. That's all we're asking, right? This isn't about winning. This is about, right, equilateral, equilateral accountability for the better, the best outcomes for the kids. But point out their bad, inappropriate, and unacceptable behaviors. Like, make a list of them. Even instead, again, instead of using this mental energy about defending yourself or explaining yourself, use that mental energy to like make lists or, 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 uh, yeah, just make lists of, of your concerns about their behavior and, and learn to focus some of your attention on that. I believe that I had a homework assignment on this. Yeah. this it's just simply that. Okay. So this is just one rule on that 12, 12 rule course. Again, I went from five to 12. And so, um, and again, a, a, a lot of these new rules focus on the psychological gamey part of it because that, that's really what it is. It's, it's a game. Um, uh, when it comes to the court, you, you, you have to, you can't just like kind of take these steps. You also have to like play the psychological game and learn how to win the psychological game in the process. Okay. So that is, let me get this back to full screen. So that is... Rule number 11 of my 12 rules. Again, uh, the 12 rules course is at my new website. The old course, the five rules is still up on Udemy. This course is going to be much higher quality just in terms of the content and the rules and, and the advice and the guidance. So again, highconflictcommunity.com. Uh, so go check it out. Go take that course. It, it is available now. Uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.